there is a sense of Vermont. There's no other way to put it. Now, I wouldn't say we know everyone, but uh, it's a real first name basis kind of place. I know there are other places in the country that are, you know, kind of nice to look at, uh, but no place has the natural beauty of Vermont, and it's the working landscape of our dairy farms that, that maintain that beauty. We're a very small uh, electric utility in a very small state, and really have tried to, at every level, say, how can we do this better? How can we do it differently? We're looking, as all Americans are, for uh, alternative energy sources, for uh, energy independence and the chance to, uh, to generate electricity here at home. I think for me personally, it's about the environment. And it's about trying to save our earth for our children. We are very concerned because we live in a beautiful place to keep it a beautiful place. So at a grassroots level, what can we do? Uh, most of the time, our customers have never had a choice as to where their power comes from. Now, they can contribute about 20 bucks extra a month to select renewable energy that's been produced by a neighbor. Hi, my name is Dave Dunn. I'm the manager of renewables at Central Vermont Public Service, Vermont's largest electric utility. My role is to work with customers who want to build renewable energy projects. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about cow power and how those projects have been developed here in Vermont. I'd like to use this graphic as an overview of how the process works for the farm. The first step in a four-step process is waste collection. On a dairy farm with animals, there's manure, animal waste, as well as the waste that's collected uh, from the rinse water and wash water of the milking equipment. That is all collected and passed on to the next step. The next step is called manure digestion. An anaerobic digester collects all the waste from the farm, from all the animals and all the processes. It's going to break down those wastes continually beyond what the cow will do. That waste, as a byproduct, creates biogas, which includes a very useful gas, methane. Methane is used as a fuel in the next step of the process. The next step, making electricity. Using the methane in the biogas to run an engine, an engine very much like the car or truck engine that you have, that's linked to an electric generator. That generator produces more than enough electricity for the farm to use and has a greater benefit for the community. That generator is connected to the grid, and the grid distributes that power to local communities. The last stage of the process is separation. Manure separation takes the effluent from the digester and incorporates a screw press to create the liquid portion that the farm will continue to use as fertilizer, as well as the solid portion. That solid portion is used to replace sawdust for bedding on the farm. The liquids are used after storage as needed for fertilizing hay crops or other crops on the farm to augment their growth. But as far as the community goes, the local community has the opportunity to sign up and support these projects. Through a direct contribution on their electric bill, companies like Green Mountain College, Green Mountain Beverage, and cooperative insurance companies, they contribute a little bit extra to this farm through their direct connection both financially and to the grid. Now that you've had an opportunity to see how cow power works from a farm perspective, why is it that a small utility in Vermont is interested in cow power? I'd like to share with you today the business case of why Central Vermont Public Service got involved in cow power. We look at it from the three R's, renewal, reputation, and relationship. What does renewal mean for Central Vermont Public Service? It's an opportunity for us to do things a little bit differently and identify some value that makes sense for a utility. We wanted to focus on renewable energy in areas that weren't being focused on. Solar energy and wind energy seem to have their own champions. We decided that we would focus on a technology that made a lot of sense for Vermont, but it could also make a lot of sense outside of Vermont. We'll talk more about that later. Renewal was a chance for us to engage our customers. How do we engage our customers in new ways? Ask them what they want from a renewable energy supply. And our customers told us, hey, we want you to focus on that, and that helped us. Uh, reputation uh, 
historically hasn't been a big deal in a regulated utility world. Uh, you know, we had a guaranteed customer base, and this was an opportunity to look at things a little bit differently. How does a utility benefit from reputation changes? And our reputation was, I'd have to say, somewhat lacking in the community, from the environmental groups, and from our regulators in the past. And this gave us an opportunity to show that we were engaged in things that were important to Vermonters. By their voting for cow power, we listened and we worked to generate new interest and help support the technology that created these projects on farms. And that improved our, our image. Uh, the company did something called the Schaefer Survey. And to a utility, public image has become more and more important. It's part of our goals and objectives to be recognized as a leader. Someday we'd like to become the best small utility in America, and that's a piece of the equation. Uh, so we did the Schaefer survey, and they, they survey opinion leaders in Vermont, everything from the governor through the legislature and our regulators, and even media people. And cow power became an important piece of the reputation that it had improved over time, that people started to understand that Central Vermont Public Service was interested in promoting renewable energy and created new connections between customers and the, the uh, generators that wanted to build uh, projects and the farms that wanted to build renewable generation. Another one of the R's that we'd like to focus on and we have focused on that's created value for the utility is relationships. Interestingly enough, Cal Power not only built a relationship between the utility and the generator, it created relationships that were more strong and better ties between employees and more ties between the outside community as a, as a whole. And when we hear from community members who say, I think Cal Power is a great idea, uh, send me a box of brochures and I'm going to go door to door. So CVPS is now looked at as an innovator, as a way to connect customers directly to projects that need a little bit of help. And those donations go directly to projects like the Cal Power projects to make things happen. Cow power is taking the manure from our cows and turning it into electricity. It's a never-ending source of power, so it's renewable energy in the best form. Milk prices are up and down and all over the place, and I think a lot of farms are looking at, we want to stay in farming, we're committed, we have land we want to keep open, uh, we love the animals, but how can we make our farm better on the economic side of it? Our farm produces uh, 10 million gallons of waste a year. That's a lot of manure. The, the odor is horrendous. You can't expect someone coming up here from Manhattan to find it pleasant. It's not pleasant. The cow power gives us an opportunity to contain that, uh, to improve the water quality of our state that's so important to our quality of life and, and also to our economy. Now that you know a little bit about cow power and why Central Vermont looked at this as a business model, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the global perspectives. How do you take a little project in Vermont and expand it out to having more of a societal benefit? What started out on a Vermont scale as a project, I think there's a business case for expanding this nationally as well as globally. Nationally, there's an expansion to look at animal agriculture's connection to food producers and the waste produced by food producers that would deliver, be normally delivered to a landfill. How do we expand that globally to a business case that this means something to address the global climate change issue? China, for example, is a leading emitter of greenhouse gases. This is an opportunity to combine animal agriculture in China or anywhere else in the developing world with growing economies and growing needs for energy. While it may not solve the entire puzzle, it will have a great impact on both the business case as well as the environment. It's a model for helping the world community, and we think the timing is right.